All right, so the, uh, the person of interest I was given to preach on was uh, Saul. So, and there are a lot of things we can learn from the books of Samuel about Saul. Uh, but since it's only a short sermon, I just want to focus on one aspect of him and his character. So I'll turn to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9. And so we're just going to look at a brief look into his ordination as king and what kind of man that he was. So what, what sort of character he was in the beginning. And much like Samuel, you know, he was very different in the beginning than he was in the end. Um, but in 1 Samuel 9 verse 1, it says, Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Becheroth, the son of Aphiah, the Benjamite, a mighty man of power. So Saul was the son of a powerful, a mighty man. It says, And he had a son whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upwards he was higher than any of the people. So and in the story, Saul's working for his father. He's sent out to find his father's asses that had gone missing. Um, so they've been out for some time because they were worried that the people at home were worried, you know, were concerned about where he was um, and that they might come after them. So he shows good character in that he's working hard for his father when he's when his you know asses go missing. He goes out to find them, takes a servant with him, and um, you know, and then he understands that they're going to be worried about me. I've been gone for so long, so I better get back home. But also, when he goes to see Samuel, um, the prophet of God, he offers a gift. Like, he goes and says, we need to offer him a gift. Um, so he has respect for his father, but he also has respect for the prophet of God. And I don't have the time to go through all the story of how Saul's chosen, but it says there in verse 2, he's a goodly man, a choice young man. We also see he was a tall man, a man of big stature, head and shoulders above his peers. So we know why he was chosen. You know, he's a man that God chose with good character and humility, but also a man of war, so that he could, he could lead the children of Israel into war. So turn to 1 Samuel chapter 11. But in chapter 10, we see that he also prophesied among the prophets, um, and the people received him gladly. Um, but of course, there were some people who didn't. In 1 Samuel eleven twelve, it says, And the people said unto Samuel, Who is he that said, Saul shall reign over us? Bring us the man that we may put them to death. And Saul said, There shall not a man be put to death this day, for today the Lord hath wrought salvation in Israel. Then said Samuel to the people, Come and let us go to Gilgal and renew the kingdom there. And all the people went to Gilgal, and there they made Saul king before the Lord in Gilgal. And there they sacrificed sacrifices of peace offerings before the Lord. And there Saul and all the men of Israel rejoiced greatly. So he's also a man of compassion. Because we see that when he was a leader in the time of war, and they'd just won a great battle, um, and there were some people who were, who were complaining and murmuring against him, and he said, look, no, don't put him to death today. We've had a great victory in the Lord. Let's celebrate. You know, and he was with the people who were celebrating with him. And, but what I want to show you is why we must continue in the right ways, to trust in the Lord as David trusted, to live by faith and to contrast the character of the man Saul with the man David. Because both were made kings of Israel, but there was only one throne and one lineage of Jesus Christ. So why was David chosen over Saul? Uh, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 13, and we'll start in verse 8. It says, And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Saul came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. So he's supposed to wait for Samuel. Samuel's the high priest. Samuel's the prophet. He's the one who can actually perform the ceremony, the sacrifice. But because he was impatient, he decided to do it himself. And we see this is the beginning of the downfall of Saul. In verse 11, it says, And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself therefore, and offered a burnt offering. He was not forced to do it. He just was impatient. He didn't trust in the Lord. It says, then Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. 
Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath sought him a man after his own heart, and the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. So do you notice that response from Saul? In verse 11, he's blaming his transgression on the people. And he's also blaming it on Samuel for being later than he expected. And Saul was not trusting in the Lord. He took on, took on himself that role of priest, which was not his role to take. And it's interesting in verse 13 that Samuel says the Lord would have established the kingdom through Saul. And perhaps Christ would have been prophesied through the lineage of Saul and not David had Saul actually been a man after God's own heart like David. But because of that, it was taken away from him and that kingdom then became David's. And the, the Lord Jesus Christ, his lineage comes through David and through that throne. But that's, that's a heck of a thing to lose. Like, just imagine that he, everything that was prophesied about Christ could have come from the, from the family of Saul. You know, but he blew it. He just didn't do what was right. He broke the commandment of God that God clearly commanded him to do. You know, and we saw that the Lord sought a man after his own heart. We know that's, of course, David. And that's why the prophecy of the Lord is from the throne of David, which was established. You know, but he blows it again in chapter, uh, in verse 15. Sorry, chapter 15, 1 Samuel 15, verse 3. So I'll get you to turn there as well and follow along. So in 1 Samuel 15, 3, it says, Now go and smite Amalek, and utterly destroy all they have, and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infants and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So that's a pretty clear commandment. You just slay everything. Just leave nothing alive. But that was not what they, that's not what he did. You know, there's no misunderstanding here. You know, he's just in rebellion. He's in disobedience. In verse 9 it says, But Saul and the people spared Agag, and the best of the sheep, and the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refuse, that they utterly destroyed. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me. Again, just as we saw with, with Brother Callum's sermon on Solomon, he's turned away from the Lord. It says, and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And this is another example of Saul not hearkening to the commandments of the Lord and causing the Lord to reject him as king. In verse 13, it says, And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Now, he's not being honest here. He has not performed the commandment of the Lord. He's performed what he believes to be the commandment of the Lord, what he wanted to do. But that's not what God actually commanded. We saw it was crystal clear what God actually commanded. And uh, Samuel actually calls him out in it, verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? So he was humble in the beginning. But his pride got in the way, and he refused to accept the commandments of God and to do his own thing. And he never accepted responsibility for himself. And, you know, that's a good leader will always accept responsibility for the things they have done, and even sometimes take on responsibilities of people under them because they're the ones responsible. But Saul was not a good leader. He was a terrible king, and the Lord even repented that he'd even made him king. In verse 18, 1 Samuel 15, 18, it says, And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then dost thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Agag the king of Amalek and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So Saul's trying to justify himself here in front of Samuel. Samuel knows he's a liar. God knows he's a liar. He's claiming that he did what was asked of him, and it's the people who sinned. But it was Saul, the bad leader. He's the one who sinned. And he just would not accept his part in the matter, and that just shows very poor character and his absolutely awful leadership. You know, and Saul's confession 
Um, Saul's confession is, but the people took of the spoil. Sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it's to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. So does that sound genuine to you, like he actually accepts responsibility for what he's done? You know, he shows no repentance, you know, and he's blaming everything on the people. You know, and all Saul could do here is just blame other people. And even when he's troubled by an evil spirit of the Lord, then David has to come play for him. He's seeking to harm David because of envy and bitterness. And again, that stems from the pride that he had. You know, and when the spirit of the Lord departs from Saul, he goes to the witch of Endor to drag up poor Samuel and speak to him because the Lord won't speak to him anymore. So rather than go back to the Lord and try and write himself before the Lord, like he's going to, to a witch. He's going to the wrong people. And it's an important lesson for us as well. You know, not to get high-minded. If the Lord gives you authority or leadership, you know, not to get too high-minded and let pride get in the way. You know, it's why you never obviously exalt a novice because it says, you know, they're the ones who are going to be prideful. But you've got to take ownership of your own sins, your own actions as a leader. You know, take responsibility for what you've done, what you've been commanded to do. And that'll be a good trait. That's a good char- it shows good character in that person. You know, and people will actually respect a leader that does that, that is able to actually take responsibility for themselves. But when, when it comes to, to David, now, obviously, David's confronted by Nathan. Most people know this, you know, about Uriah the Hittite. He sent him into the, into the heat of the battle to get killed because he wanted his wife. He had already, he had already committed adultery with her. And she was pregnant, so he had to kill the husband, you know, so people wouldn't ask questions. And that's a wicked thing that he did. But when it was brought up to him, in 2 Samuel 12, 13, David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. So the difference between these two people is staggering. You know, the reason Saul lost the favor of the Lord and the kingdom and authority that he was given was because he was prideful. Now, he didn't start that way. He started off as a humble man, but he let pride get in the way. And because of envy, and God does not respect an unrepentant fool. So in 1 Chronicles 10.13, it says, So Saul died for his transgression which he committed against the Lord, even against the word of the Lord which he kept not, and also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore he slew him and turned the kingdom unto David the son of Jesse. You know, and even Moses got angry you know, at the children of Israel in the book of Numbers, he didn't trust in the Lord. And instead of speaking to the rock as he was commanded to do, he smote the rock. And Moses was punished for that. He didn't receive death, but the Lord would not allow him to enter the promised land. He had to look at it from the top of the mountain and die. And the punishment for David was his son died because of his transgression. But he still received, he accepted responsibility. Because of that, David didn't die as well. But Saul, Saul had, you know, committed suicide on the battlefield. But he was told he was going to die that day on the battlefield. So he knew he was going to die, and that was the Lord's punishment for what he'd done. And we don't want to make the mistake of not trusting in the Lord. So just let us learn from Saul to not make that same mistake, to inquire of the Lord and trust him only. Chastisement will come, but God may choose to be merciful in his chastisement. Be humble and not proud. Don't be too proud to admit you've made a mistake and to inquire of the Lord for forgiveness. And as the scripture says in Habakkuk 2.4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So let's pray.